So tell me, where is he? Where is he? Do I look more interrogating right here? Do I? Because I seem like I really am. Don't mess with me, man. Don't mess with me! <laughs> Maybe I should just switch this full setup for my studio. Just dark and interrogative. Oh yeah. What's up guys, my name is Paul, and if you're new here, we're on a channel that inspires other creators that your future is whatever you make it. I do that through gear reviews, tutorials, and today we are going over a light that is pretty darn good budget light. And I think it's probably my number one pick if you had to stay on a budget, but you still wanted those qualities. And if you like this kind of content, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. So. What is this light? This light is the Pixel C100. And you can find this light on Amazon and it's normally around 250 to 280 bucks. When you get it on a steal like Prime Day, you can get it, I saw it as low as $200, which is crazy for a budgetary light that has all these features packed in that I'm gonna get into today. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to keep this light. I bought it for some softbox reviews, thought I was gonna be able to keep it if I liked it, I liked it, but there were some complications with the monthly budget, so I did have to return that light. Maybe if on, it goes on sale on Black Friday, I will buy it again. A good COB light is in my future, but we'll see. This light is fantastic. Like, just the quality of it, it comes with a bag, all the accessories it comes with, the remote. You really just can't go wrong with a budgetary option like that, and that's why I think it's one of the best for the budget. Sure, you can go out and buy the Godox SL60W, but the fan noise is a little crazy and it doesn't come with anything other than a remote and the light itself. So pick and choose your battles. Otherwise, it's still a great light and you probably could get away with not hearing the noise much if you're on a strict budget. But this is probably my suggestion for all around usability and budgetary options. But there's always cons of these lights. So the biggest con for me was the power adapter. I just didn't like it that much. It was nice that when you push it in hard enough, it locks. It was a custom made adapter for through them, or maybe it was some proprietary power adapter that other people use, but I'd never seen one before in my life. And it's, it would just make it hard if it broke or anything like that to replace it. You'd probably have to reach out to Pixel and get it replaced or Google and seek, try to figure out what kind of adapter it was. I just never saw it before. It was a really crazy, XLR pin-ish adapter. But the nice thing is when you did plug it in, it locked, but I just don't like using proprietary stuff. I'd much rather if the light just had an IC power cable than you, you know, plug into a monitor or a PC, so like the Godox. But you know, we can live with that. That's really one of the major cons in my book. But the secondary con is that it's not exactly true to the color science Kelvin measure. I found that when I was using it, I was around 5,000 to 5,100 Kelvin when I'm trying to get to a 5,600 Kelvin-ish color temperature. So the biggest tip for that is just A, figure out where the light sits with your camera by testing it, or just use a gray card and white balance your camera properly. And as the famous Gerald Dunn says, even if you do have a light that is super accurate color-wise, you're gonna put a modifier on it, you're gonna put a softbox on it, and that always will change the color. So even if the light was perfectly right on the Kelvin mark, you're gonna put a softbox on that or a modifier, and it's gonna take that light and make it unperfect because of the material it's using, because of the various things. So you just use a gray card. But those are my two biggest cons. The whole thing is actually built very well. It's got a mixture of like metal, which is that silver, and then there's some cheap, like, or I shouldn't say cheap, but just plastic. And it doesn't feel cheap. It feels sturdy. I didn't feel like I was getting like gypped off because, oh man, they're using plastic. I thought the build quality of this light was very good. And uh, it really mimics that like Aperture 120D body frame. And so you can't really go wrong with that. I mean, they made this, these lights famous, right? 
The other positive is that the thing came with a remote, and the remote actually functioned very well. It had a, like a scroll wheel. You could, you know, dim and make the light brighter. Um, the light did go all the way down, very low to 1%, and you can go all the way up in this light. So, And the other positive thing of this thing is the, is the fan noise. It is so quiet. And on top of all that, even if it did bother you that you could hear it slightly, but it's, I'm telling you, it's super quiet. You could just turn it off and the fan will automatically kick in when it knows it's getting hot again. And that is just amazing. It makes this light just that much better. Not only does it look good, but you're not gonna have to worry about the audio issues from it because you're not gonna be able to hear that quiet fan that plagues products like the Godox SL60 and some of the Sakantis. If you want a few examples of what this light looks like, well, let me just roll those now for you. And this right here is the light at 1%. I think this is a great light overall, and the softbox and this light combo together are great. I'm using a cheap Amazon Basics stand to hold this setup up, and it's doing very well. So you don't have to invest in crazy powerful C stands because the light is very, you know, light, and so is this. It has a small softbox on it, so you can really put this in small spaces and get away with it. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic combo uh, for people who are really trying to condense their setup or or stay in a confined area. All right, so the, I mean, the light looks pretty darn good and you can get some cinematic looks out of this light if you pair it up with a nice modifier or softbox and you can get a good look and just make sure you white balance the light. Um, the other positive thing about this light is that it comes with a carrying case. Unlike the other options, even Godox's mid-tier like $400 COB lights don't include a, a carrying case and this carrying case was actually really nice it wasn't like a cheap bag or anything I feel like it was on, on par with like what Aperture used to put out uh, for their Gen 1's not the ones you can stand on but just like a nice padded big bag and it was really nice I I really enjoyed that bag and it's it works great for contact players who are on the go maybe you're you know, not in the same exact set like this every week or you know you're traveling or you want to use it for client work if you're traveling with a light you got to have a nice bag that's the biggest downside for the godox lights i think they nailed it there with that bag really nice job pixel fantastic job there but overall like i said this light is probably my suggested light uh my buddy ken at original dobo he uses one in his studio and has had no problems with it for over a year so and his videos look awesome and if you haven't seen those videos I've been starting to do videos on this channel, so just check it out. Like I said, you can't, you can't really go wrong with it for a budgetary option. If you have the money and you want to go for a little bit more higher quality, sure, go go grab a Godox, uh, go grab an Aperture. But if you're looking to build up a studio with a lot of the features of a nice light, this is the one that you're going to have, definitely have to go for. Well, like, subscribe, do all the fun youtube things in this video, and you know that I will see you in the future.